Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. This is gonna be a good episode. We've got so many stories to share, some of heartache and sorrow, and some of a journey finally being completed again. I, <laughs> I know we just talked about that last unboxing episode where I found a guitar I was looking for, but that one... I've been looking for this thing for a good, I think, four years. But first, let's start with this one. I actually purchased this guitar from its original owner. That's right. A guitar that's been with this guy for almost 40 plus years now. So that tells you this thing is from the early 80s. And for a moment there, I didn't think I was actually going to keep this guitar because this one started as a private help session. He was just trying to see how much it would be worth so I let him know, like, the top end of the market, what he could realistically sell it for. And then we almost consigned this thing. But that's the one nice thing about me if you book a private help session. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I told him, you don't need me to consign this guitar. It will sell itself. But the funny story behind this thing is, is I sent him a shipping label and I scheduled him a UPS pickup. But my first label, I accidentally did it wrong because I'm so used to filling out labels to send to other people, I was mailing it to himself. <laughs> so luckily I caught that, I was like, hey, I don't think this will do you much good if you mail it to yourself. So I sent him the proper label. But then I get a message from him on the day that this is meant to be delivered. And he says, oh no, I put the wrong label on it. The UPS guy didn't catch it. I just called UPS and they said it's being rerouted back to me. But then he started telling me that he had instant regret as soon as that was picked up by the UPS person and that he's just going to keep it. And he's sorry for all the trouble that he caused and wasting my time and stuff. But then I told him, um, I think UPS might have thought you were me because I have the guitar. <laughs> it was delivered. So I told him, if you want this guitar back, you just tell me right now, cover the shipping costs, it'll go back to you because I know what it's like to have a treasured guitar just ripped out of your hands. When I sold my initial Spotlight Special collection, I had that same instant regret after a couple of days. So I asked the guy if I could buy them back at the same price. He said yes, but he gets to keep number two. So it's like I gave number two away for nothing. <laughs> I'll never forget that feeling. So even though this was all business for me, I gave him the opportunity to get this guitar back. But once he knew it was actually here, after going a little bit back and forth, making sure that he was surely sure that he wanted to sell this guitar, he decided it was time to let it go because he felt this guitar owned him instead of him owning this. And my gosh, looking at this case, have you guys ever seen an 80s lift and reissue case this clean? I mean, sure, <laughs> it's got the uh, replaced handle as always. It's not mint condition, but this is clean. But essentially, the story behind this guitar is he owned it since new, and the only marks that we're supposed to see on this thing is when he loaned it to his nephew one time. What is in here? Hopefully UPS didn't destroy it because this is going to be a time capsule. Well, he definitely did do a good job packing it. Let's see if I can get it out real quick. Wow, zip ties. Inside here sleeps a model that I've owned before and we've talked about it and I keep saying I need to get another one of these because it's just kind of an interesting 80s model that has a lot of history and it started like a whole revolution for Gibson so I think that will give you guys some hints here <laughs> this reminds me of unboxing a Squire it's got that same stuff Heritage 80 Elite so this was Gibson's first attempt at a mass run 59 reissue. Obviously the specs are pretty much garbage in comparison to a 59 burst, but you know, it was a stepping stone. But let's take a look at this. You know, it's got a little bit more wear than I was expecting, but what makes the Elite different from the standard standard is you get an ebony fretboard. But take a look at that. It's kind of mixed matched, but I like it because this is like a heavily super quilt action right there. And then this one, it's not quite as tight. It kind of reminds me of some of my spotlight specials. Man, this thing's got a pretty nice dish carve to it as well. So yeah, the front, pretty clean. You got a few little nicks and dings here and there from playing it. And the back, he said it was his nephew that put those light buckle marks right there. Looks like number 1103. It's a 1981 model. 
but I will have to definitely review this one. But let's go ahead and hear a word from our sponsor today. Today's sponsor is Extra Smart Wallets. Made out of premium leather, Extra holds your money and cards securely while keeping your information safe from pickpocketers using RFID scanners. So this safe wallet is about the size of a regular one, but with the click of a button, I love this feature, you get access to all your cards neatly displayed out like this. And they're not gonna fall out accidentally either. I mean, look at me, I'm trying to knock it out of place right here. This company also has solar powered tracking cards available. My viewers can get 15% off their purchase using code TROGLY15 at checkout and by using the link in the description. Also, one lucky USA-based commenter will be selected to win a free wallet. Thank you, Exter, for sponsoring today's episode, and good luck. But this one, if you thought that guitar was rare, I mean, that thing's relatively common. I mean, finding a nice top, the condition, and all that, that's perfectly fine, but this, this is a piece. I think it was Rock or Not number two. So that tells you how long I've been searching for one of these. And it's not a perfect example, but you know, it's close enough. I might have to do some Wayne jangling just to make this one perfect. So I got an email from a follower of the show and he said, hey, my buddy has this guitar that looks brand new and it's really rare. I think you should get in contact with him. It's like, okay, okay, yeah, let's do it. But to be honest, he had me hooked just from the beginning telling me what model it was. This is an anniversary model from the mid 70s that very few people know exist. And that's for pretty good reasons because there's only about 50 of these things made. But everybody knows the bigger brother that celebrated the exact same anniversary but a little bit later. So that should be enough hints for the savvy Les Paul custom aficionados out there. That's right. I finally found. Oh gosh, that looks fantastic. Oh, I've done it. This is the true 25th anniversary Les Paul Custom. Here she is. So this thing was made in the correct year for the 25th anniversary of the Les Paul. So introduced in 1952, this that would make this a 1977 instead of 78 when the 2550 was released. Fortunately, this one's missing the most important part, the little tailpiece that says 25th anniversary on it. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to buy another one of these, take that tailpiece off because this should technically have it, and then just make this one like the perfect collectible example of this. Because this one, I mean, the condition, it's fantastic. Usually the way that these silver finishes age, kind of like that silver burst, how they'll turn green, these ones do that exact same thing. I mean, this one, it's still aged a little bit. You can see it's turned yellow right there, but the finish checking is super minimal, which is very rare on a guitar that has a slightly metallic finish from Gibson. And another thing that's nice about this one is it has the Les Paul engraved signed. I'm not sure if he actually signed these or what the story is on that, because not all of them have that. Sometimes you'll find it here, sometimes you'll find it there. So maybe he did do the hand engraving. I'll have to do a little bit more research. I mean, it's got a little bit of buckle worming and stuff, but you know, as far as these things go, this was a very nice find. But it was also on uh, eBay, just slightly mislisted for a little bit. That's why I didn't even see it there. So yes, full review and demo, and I'll teach you a little bit more of why this guitar is super special because, you know, it birthed some other finishes as well. And hey, you remember last time I left you guys on the cliffhanger? Let's go ahead and jump back in time and do that final unboxing. So this was one that showed up on Reverb. I think it was kind of like a, a mid-afternoon find. It was at a decent enough of a price that, you know, I've always wanted one of these, but I've been kind of picky, very picky with the condition. But this one, the price was good enough that I just decided, eh, let's just go ahead and do it. It's taken me, what, five, six years of waiting and I haven't found anything to my liking yet. On top of that, it wasn't the finish that I wanted it to be. But it is a finish that's kind of warmed up to me over the years. I remember when I first saw these, it's like, who would want that? And now it's like, okay, I, I, I see the appeal. Huh. T. T for Trogly? Oh, no, they're marking off Epiphone. <laughs> oh, boy. 
What does that say? I'm not quite sure. The day has finally come. One of them maple fretboard Les Pauls. Wow, this is a lot more beat up than their photo. Yeah. How many times do I have to tell you guys this? Take your toggle switch tips off. That's a shame because that's a vintage one, so that's actually going to cost money to replace. Oh boy. Now the wear and tear on the fretboard, that's kind of to be expected. That's kind of what I've been picky about. I've been looking for one that's like in mint condition with that. But as far as the body, I was, you know, not expecting all this gunk. So I'm sure after a quick little polish job, this will look good. But I can also tell you this is also a Kalamazoo made one. Now, if I remember correctly, yeah, this is a 77. This was actually the first guitar made that particular day. That was something else that kind of made me go, yeah, I'd like to do that. It looks like somebody reinstalled our tuner a little bit crooked and somebody just played the crap out of this thing. And it is still the original pickups in here. They just took the original covers off of it. It kind of has a certain vibe all on its own. This thing just needs to be cleaned up and then somebody will be ready to take this one home and put their own gunk on it because it's kind of just been worn in. Honestly, at this point, you'd probably just be better off sanding off the rest of the finish here. Definitely need to check the truss route on this guy though. Dirt and grime, it doesn't want to come over. It's either that or somebody purposefully glued it down so you wouldn't check. You'd think that'd be too crazy to make up, but it does happen. Well, our truss rod's good. <laughs> Do you see all that dirt and grime buildup on that? That's crazy. No wonder it was sticking. Hey, it's me from the future here. So this guitar ended up not working out. I tried to work it out with the seller, but we were just, you know, a little bit too far apart and he could make more money selling this to someone else anyways. But the thing that finally put that nail in the coffin for me was the nut issue. So when we couldn't come to terms money-wise just to replace a simple vintage switch tip, it's like, all right, I'll just send it back to you. So let's go ahead and get this old gal packed back up to its owner that apparently loved it. And you can probably catch it on Reaver for 2,700 bucks, which is a good value for, you know, this rare guitar. Next up here, it's my Powerpuff Girl guitar. I'm sad to see it go, but at least it's going to a home that's also going to appreciate it. Thoroughly disappointed in you guys for not watching this video. This has performed absolutely terribly. I kind of figured it was going to be a viral hit or just absolutely nothing at all. And unfortunately, it was the last one. That's all right. I still love these guitars. I'm going to hold on to that Mojo Jojo until somebody wants to pay crazy money for it because these Powerpuff Girls ones, ever since I started talking about them, they've started to pop up more often because people are like, oh, these things are worth money. <laughs> but anyways, here's something a little bit more on the this one. Remember how we saw a 92 in this bridge pickup cavity? I've been talking to a few other owners of these and somebody shared a photo of me and there says no one, like number one. So is it true that they made 100 of these things and they actually numbered them in the bridge pickup cavity? At this point in time, I'm not sure because I've only got one other photo to verify that there's some sort of number in there. That could just be some sort of anomaly or maybe they did number them. So if you own one of these, please take these little screws out. Don't take these two out or else you're going to have to redo your pickup. But just take these five out and send me a photo on my Facebook page because that'd be really interesting if they all were numbered. You can also do that if you own one of those Mojo Jojos. Now here's a sight for sore eyes. So this was one of those guitars that my buddy who went off to the Navy left me. Just, you know, hold on to until he came back, you know, had a house, had life going on like normal again. So I think I've had this guitar, what, three years, maybe four years, I don't remember. But we just recently sold that Marauder and I asked him, do you want me to sell your DSG too? Because he never really learned guitar. He just kind of got into it because I was into it and it was just a great fun, you know, actually having somebody, you know, locally, my same age that was kind of into guitars as well. So he had gotten the Marauder, he was doing a VSG. Basically, we wanted to have a V collection because there's also a The V, there's like a V Les Paul, which just kind of seemed like a dream at that point in time. And here, now I think I've owned, what, five or six of them now. There's also something called a The Hawk. I mean, a The collection or a the collection is definitely something I would be interested in getting one day. 
But the story behind this guitar is he actually found it on Craigslist. I think he was down in Columbus. I think he went to college or something there for a, a short sprint of time. And he had found this locally and it was kind of like a slightly sketchy situation if I remember his story correctly. Like he showed up to the dude's house. He's like, hey, it's over here. Quickly buy it, get out of here. Something like that. I don't really remember that. But this thing's been slightly modified. It's got an aftermarket pick guard. They've swapped out the knobs. And I was going to do a review on this back when, you know, I was running out of ideas of what to do because I just didn't have a lot of guitars. I'll never reach that point again in my life. But I started filming this and when I took the neck pickup out, there's a Jesus fish under here. <laughs> I'm not sure what the official term is, but somebody stamped one of those Jesus fish in there. So this was likely a church guitar. That would be my best guess because somebody's played the crap out of this thing. I mean, they've naturally worn off the finish off the neck. And this is just kind of a thin satin finish to begin with, so it's not that hard to do that. But this was a player. And let me tell you, the SGs, despite not being my favorite, they are very interesting and different from an SG standard. I did a different video a long time ago on a different the SG, but what makes these different from the regular standards is they have a walnut body. So that's just kind of interesting and unique to them. Uh, ebony fretboard, I was kind of phased out by this time on the SG standards, not all of them. But the biggest thing is this has a normal nut width. Time to pack up one of these expensive ones. This is the 60th anniversary RO, the one that somebody purchased through my new Guitar Day program. That was definitely really helpful having both the version 1 and version 3 neck within the same review and demo. A little bit harder to do with doing so much extra B-roll, but I think it was worth it in the end. And hey, it helps Gibson get the word out about the uh, shipping ledger bounty. $59,000. We'll see if anybody finds that. Thank you Troglodytes for tuning in today. Don't forget to visit our sponsor Exter and pick yourself up a safe wallet and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.